Welcome to Brewer, Maine, a city of some 10,000 people along the banks of the Penobscot River, about 50 miles from the Atlantic coast. Like much of Maine, Brewer's economy has centered around natural resources, specifically trees. In 1896, the Eastern Pine Paper Mill opened. In 2004, it closed. At its peak, several hundred people worked there. The history of this mill mirrors the history of the papermaking industry in Maine from good times to bad. It really begins in about 1740, and the person who starts it is a man called S.D. Warren in Westbrook, Maine. Now this is a paper that is made entirely of rags. There are no other wood or anything like that in it. And Warren got into this business because he was the chief rag importer from Europe and elsewhere, so that he was the man who had the, the uh, rags there, and to make the paper, and so he just put the paper mill on it as a, as a side show. This mill started, the paper mill started here because of an extraordinary man called Fred Ayer in the 1890s. Ayer began and created the largest, fastest sawmill in the world. People came from all over the world to come see it and learn how he made it work. Well, Fred Ayer had a, had a kind of vision and that was that if you make the best product, people will come to get that product. Through the years, the Brewer Mill has been noted for the quality of its paper and the pride of their people. It was an integral part of this community in the history of this community from the days of the log drives. Uh, up past that, uh, when Dow Field closed. That was quite a uh, hit for this area when the Air Force pulled out. But you still had the mill. You still had that four or five hundred jobs that paid real well. And that was a <clears throat> that was a steadying factor. To the workers, Eastern Fine Paper Mill was more than just a job. That mill was the identity of the South End, and, and more, probably more, of the whole city. But the South End was built around that mill. The, the housing, the businesses, uh, all depended upon the, the uh, income of that mill for their livelihood. Most people think that paper making is men's work, but actually, women play an important role too. I was probably one of the first women to ever actually do a man's work, what they would consider a man's work, heavy work. But as the years went on and the mills opened up to um, women coming there to work, um, we, they started to have you know, more women coming in. But it was hard work. I mean, you know, they, you had to do it. Hinkley says that the men at the mill treated her well. Um, I never had one problem really? at any time. Um, I think that I demonstrated that I could do the work and that I wasn't there to have someone do it for me, you know. Um, I guess you could have a look at me, I'm not what you call a femme fatale. <laughs> So I never was afraid of doing work, you know, man's work or anything like that. So um, if something had to be lifted, I lifted it. If something had to be uh, picked up and heavy, I, I, just, I did it. You know? And I think the guys uh, respected me a lot for that. Yeah. As the mill grew, it changed the community too. It has an immense effect because what it does is provide work for all the people who live down in this side of the river. So they could go to that mill and family after family used that, depended on that for their jobs, their places and so forth and so on. Uh, I can't imagine Brewer without the paper industry. The influence of the mill was very strong. Several businesses opened up nearby to serve the workers. States from um, Poland 
and uh, as a young boy and he started being a first uh, he was a peddler on the road and he had a, a horse and a, a wagon and he traveled around from place to place and sold clothing uh, from his the back of his uh, wagon. Ellie Israel's grandfather, Max Epstein, opened his store in 1910, and several generations of Epsteins would work there. Co workers would uh, come in, most of the time their wives would come in and, and charge. We had charge accounts. And in those days, you, you didn't have it, you didn't, didn't cost you anything. We didn't have any fees. So, and the mill worker would come every Thursday or Friday, whatever payday was, and he would cash his check, and most of the time it was all males working at the mill at the time. There were a few females working in the office, but mostly males, and they would uh, cash their check and leave five dollars to put on their account. And it, it was quite a, that, that's how we got to know. And so I would say uh, most of the mill workers we got to know, and we got to know their families. City manager Steve Boss says the mill played a big role in Brewer's history. It was really not only the, uh, uh, the place where most people uh, worked, uh, or, uh, many, many uh, folks that worked there, their entire extended family worked there, and they had worked there for generations. Uh, but it was also the social, uh, uh, it, it was really part of the social fabric of the community. That's where a lot of folks uh, met. Uh, that's where they congregated. Uh, it was really the centerpiece of, of the city. Today, the mill is like a ghost town. Our entire seventh grade went to visit it. It was like the workers had just walked out expecting to come back the next day, but they never did. We went up a creaky flight of stairs and down a metal ramp. As I turned around a corner, I saw boxes full of paper. Considering that this company had been shut down two years ago, it was still white and with little dust. This was most surprising. It was like it was a memory of what had meant so much to the local economy. When we started touring the mill, it looked like it had been a home away from home for the 240 workers laid off in 2004. They were told to get out, one day's notice to give up their job and leave a good part of their disappearing lives behind. My visit to the Eastern Fine Paper Mill was interesting and exciting. I made my way to what seemed the basement. On a red elevator door were hundreds of names welded by the former employees. This is how I think that the workers left part of themselves behind in a place that they had considered their second home. The closing of the mill was a moment many people will never forget. You have to move on. So you uh, pick up and go and, and continue to, uh, 
to function, but there's always a little spot that um, really hurts. It, the closure of the Eastern Fine Paper Mill in Brewer was something that a lot of people had anticipated for a long time, so it really, it was uh, of great concern to us, but it wasn't terribly shocking, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. The mill was an integral part of Brewer, but also of Bangor, because it's, it, it, it supplied income. And every time an, a work person grabs an income, he or she spends the money in the area. And it was very important to have industry. And today, it's, it, it, it really hurt Brewer. I, I had to take on another role, because I had been saying that the paper industry in Maine was dead and dying, and I had been saying that for 20 years. And I'd been saying it in Brewer even, and elsewhere. And people would say, oh no, never happened, never happened. Well, the fact of the matter is, I knew it was going to happen because of the new methods of manufacture and the speed of it and so on, meant that the some place like this Brewer Mill couldn't compete any longer. It competed longer than most, but not any longer in terms of the totality of the mills. The future of the Eastern Fine Paper Mill site is the subject of lots of optimism. What we know for sure is that the brewer we know would be a very different place if we're not for the mill and the generations who work there. For Brewer Middle School and the History Channel, I'm Sonia Biswas. Thanks for watching.